أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين What are the conditions of حيض Number one is بلوغ When we say maturity we, When we say maturity uh, We mean uh, بلوغ Okay and what is the um, condition for uh, bulugh? It is the reaching of nine, the completion of nine lunar years, the completion of uh, hijri years, or its equivalent in the Gregorian calendar, eight years and nine months. So, beginning is... After maturity, after balugh, which is nine lunar years, and the ending is until she reaches the age of yes. The age of yes, we can loosely translate as menopause, entering into menopause, and that is 50 years for a non-Qarashi and 60 years for a Qarashi woman equivalent in um, 50 years equivalent in the um, Gregorian calendar is 48 years and 6 months 48 years and 6 months anything that a woman sees before 9 is istihada Anything that a woman sees after menopause, after yes, is istihada. Even if it has the qualities, the features of hayd. Now, with salah, it's not wajib for you to repeat your salah. You don't have to repeat your salah at all. With psalm, with fasting, you have to repeat your salah. Unless... In Salah, unless you have a nidr, a vow that you have done, and that vow falls in the period, in the time of your hayd. In this case, because you've missed out on a gap, you might have to redo the, 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 that time. Okay? As for fasting, no. It's wajib for you to repeat it. Even if you were fasting the whole day and five minutes before Maghrib and she realizes that her hayd has started. In this case, she is required to repeat the whole day. So it's never wajib to repeat your salah. It will be wajib to repeat your fasting. How about Salatul Ayat? This depends on what type of event occurred. This depends on what type of event occurred. And there is a difference of opinion among our ulama in this regard in Salatul Ayat. According to it says in for Salatul Ayat it is wajib to you for a woman to do it if it was something like a earthquake. However, if it is something fixed by time, like an eclipse, whether it be a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse, and you, the woman had her hayd during that whole duration of time let's say example for example it started at 6 p.m. and it finished at 10 p.m. for example and from 6 p.m. till 6 p.m. that whole time she had she was in her hayd in this case it is not wajib for her to do a qada for salatul ayat for kusuf or khusuf, lunar eclipse, eclipse or a solar eclipse. We've explained maturity, we've explained before, yes, 
bleeding, of course, there need, needs to be a continuation of the bleeding, which is what Haid is. Minimum is three days, maximum is ten days, and those minimum three days need to be continuous. So if you see blood on day one, and there's no more blood, and then you'd see blood, for example, on day five, that's not going to be Haid. That needs to be three consecutive days, the bleeding. Another important point is there needs to be a gap between two Haids. And that gap is a minimum of 10 days. So, minimum of 10 days between two Haids. Minimum of 10 days between two Haids. That's very important. And the blood is not a blood of a Jarh or Qarh. Damuqar is a sore, like for example, for example, a rash or a burst a pimple, pimple, a wart. That's called a, a blood from a sore. So just because a woman ha, has blood coming out, this does not mean it is. A hail. It could may be, be blood from a sore, from a scratch, from this, from that. Damujar is a wound, whatever it may be. What our fuqaha usually uh, give as an example is the blood from the breaking of the hymen. And this blood is not to be considered as blood of Haid or Istihada. So, Damul Bikara, Damul Bikara, the blood of the, the hymen, this is not to be um, taken as uh, Istihada blood or Haid blood. So, a woman might have a regular cycle, Dhatul Ada, or she might have an irregular cycle, which is that غير العادة. And in with a woman who has a um, that غير uh, ذات العادة, regular cycle means she has a cycle. It starts and it finishes. She knows when and how. Okay, it could start same time and have be of the same amount of days, right? This is called adadiya waktiya. Adad is num is the time. Adad is the number, sorry, and wakt is the time. Same time, same number every month. Starts on the fifth, ends on the twelfth. No change. Another scenario is it's. Waktiya. It starts always on the same day, but it might be six days, it might be seven days, it might be eight days. Another time is Adadiya. She gets it in different times during the month, but each time it's for the same amount of days. Then you have غَيْرُ ذَاتِ الْعَادَةِ A woman who does not have a regular cycle, a regular menstrual cycle. In this case, it's either because she is a مُبْتَدِئَةِ which means she's beginning, it's her early stages of her mensing, or she is nasiya, she's forgotten, she doesn't know how, when, this, that, or it is مُضْطَرِبَةِ which means it's mixed up one day to three days, one day six days, one day this, one day that confused this could be because of a sickness hormonal changes after having a baby during pregnancy after um, being with uh, her, her, 
her in the big after yani in after a uh, wedding after wedding you know everything changes when she is with a man for the first time and things like that oh, everything changes her hormones and everything else so um in each of these cases there are explanations for example let's say if a woman has knows that she is same time same number all the time she knows on day seven she's going to be doing this then for example she sees some blood another time outside of that she considers that blood that extra blood to be istihada blood um what was i Okay, let's say for example she has no idea when she started, what's happening, that blood is all it all confusing her. What does she do in this case? She goes to her family members, for example, the females in her family, and because of that confusion and that disturbance, she takes if she's just a regular bleeding all the time, it's just bleeding, she takes her family member of her age for example around about her age or her relatives around about her age same description and things like that and she aligns her cycle with their cycle for example if a woman who's in her menstrual cycle and she knows please pay attention she knows she's in her menstrual cycle and a man who knows that she is in her menstrual cycle if they were to become intimate, this is number one, a sin, a major sin, and number two, she needs, if it was her fault, she needs to pay uh, kafara for this, if it was his fault, he needs to do so. And it depends on when this happens in the cycle, if it's in the first third, or if it's in the middle third, or if it's in the second third. Like, for example, she has it for six days. If this is done in the first two days, she pays one uh, dinar, one shari dinar, not one dinar as in dinar and dirham that you might find in Iraq or Emirat or that. No, shari dinar, which is according to one calculation, one shari dinar equals 3.5 grams of pure gold yani 24 karat gold or 24 karat gold okay pure gold right now you need to refer back to your marja taqlid to see exactly what is a shar'i dinar because some fuqaha have difference of opinion 3.4, 3.6, 3.7, roughly around this amount. If it's in the second third of her cycle, yani day three and four, she pays half a dinar. If it's in the third, then she pays a quarter of a dinar. If it's towards the end of her cycle, right? Now, is it wajib for the couple to wait until she does her ghusl, ghusl al hayd until they're allowed to become be intimate again? The answer is, no, it's not wajib, it's just highly makru. it is makru. How about other types of uh, pleasure, sexual pleasure, other types? other than intercourse, there's no problem, there is no shari issue, there's no shari issue with this, okay, okay, thank you. What are the makru things for a woman who is in haid, for a haid, haid, a woman who is in haid, what is makru to do? Makruh things for a ha'ild. Number one is al-khidab. Khidab means to put on henna, whether it be on your hair or on your hands, on your feet. As we know, al-khidab 
and um, is something uh, mustahab and um, putting on henna is mustahab and during her a woman during her cycle it is maku number two is holding the Quran on the border which is like uh, this example here okay holding the Quran on the border number three is reciting the Holy Quran even if it's less than seven verses number four is to visit someone who is on their deathbed someone who is in the state of ihtidar it is makruh it's not makruh to go to the cemetery it's not makruh to participate in all of the other things it's only makruh from what I was reading this morning when a person is on their deathbed for a woman to go and visit them or sit with them rather how about mustahab things it's always mustahab to be as hygienic as possible to remove and change and clean the the, the cloth as as it says in the ahadith always mustahab to be on wudu especially during the times of prayer whether it is a wajib prayer or a mustahab prayer like for example Salatul Layl or Salatul Fajr or anything else mustahab for you to roll out your prayer mat and sit down on the sajada on the prayer mat in your mihrab place and do ibadah but not pray facing the qibla with wudu do dhikr like for example to say the subhanallah to the four tasbihat subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar as many times as you can during the times of your salah to do dua dua kumail dua tawassul dua this dua that very normal to do dhikr always do dhikr salawat this that mustahab for you to do face the qib that should be qibla to face the Qibla always, of course, and during the uh, times of your acts of worship, for you to recite the Qur'an is also recommended, except for those four verses that are haram for you to recite. And last but not least is to make sure you do the Mustahab Ghusls, Laylatul Qadr, Ghuslul Juba'a, etc., etc. Okay? End of Hayd, it's wajib for you to check that your that the blood the bleeding has stopped. It's the end of Hayd. You need to wait and check and double check. And if there is uh, no blood and the Hayd is finished, then that's totally fine. If not, you cannot do any ghusl or anything else until your door. As for istihada, we have explained istihada what istihada was the point here is how do you define if you have istihada qalila or mutawasita or kathira the way of defining is by entering a cloth a cut piece of cotton for example if uh, it's just on the surface the blood then that's qalila and you want to do wudu for the salah if no the blood has gone inside the, the cotton for example, then this would be istihada mutawasita, which means you do one ghusl for the day. If no, it's full of blood, it's immersed in blood. In this case, it would mean that you are in the state of istihada kathira, and that means that you will need to do a ghusl for each salah. The last is for nifas. For nifas. If it's while you are delivering the child, after you are delivering the child, it's considered as nifas. How about if a woman has a miscarriage? Then if it's a alaqa, which is up to 40 days, then according to Sayyidi Sistani, then it's not nifas. According to Sayyidi Khamenei, if it's considered to be a fetus, then it is 
considered nifas. If it's from 120 days and there is bleed and there is a, for example, a miscarriage or something, then it is considered to be nifas. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.